it. Fire! Let's go, let's go! Fire!이번 연합훈련을 통해 한미 부대는 상호 작전 수행 과정에 대한 이해를 높였고 협조 절차를 수달하였습니다. 이로써 우리 맹호 부대는 연합 작전을 통해 더 강력한 화력과 더 빠른 기동으로 반드시 싸워 이기는 결전 태세를 더욱 확고해야겠습니다. Okay, so I really see that as a couple questions, and, and I will tell you, nothing motivates a U.S. soldier to be all they can be more than a, a sleeping 10 miles from a, an adversary. And when that adversary is firing ballistic missiles, it provides an incredible focus to this training. And that's what you have here right now. Motivated soldiers conducting focused training. This focused training is really what we expect to do in time of conflict. Defeat the enemy and secure weapons of mass destruction from further proliferation. Questions? It is as realistic as we can make it in that uh, our, 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 our purpose in, during times of conflict is to defeat the enemy and secure weapons of mass destruction from further proliferation. And we've incorporated that into this scenario all the way up to the CTL sites where we normally have to secure, which is the location where weapons of mass destruction we expect to find. Well, everything we're doing right now is defensive in nature. Uh, we are not uh, being offensive, we're being defensive in nature. And as I mentioned earlier, it is strictly a training event. It's, we do it twice a year and we're going to continue to do it. And it's our, what we expect to do in conflict. And to be good at it, which I think everybody in South Korea and the world wants us to be good at it, we have to train at it. So I will say that this exercise we're doing right here validates a lot of how we are building readiness. This is the largest uh, training event we've had in six years in this area for 2nd Infantry Division. And the issues we've uh, come across the, uh, as we've worked through, uh, logistics, interoperability, nothing of it has to do with our readiness. So this is the first time we've done training with the uh, a striker brigade. 2-2 uh, striker from Joint Base Lewis McCord has joined us. Uh, and it is a much more efficient platform for what we expect to do at times of conflict. Uh, and it, we've incorporated it into the training for the first time and it's um, performed magnificently. It is uh, everything we've expected to do and better. It's efficiency, it's ability to maneuver, ability to get closer to uh, the adversary in training environment uh, has exceeded what we expected it to do. So we talked earlier, this is the largest training event we've done in six years. And how that changes is uh, we've really, it validates the U.S. Army's uh, military concept of multi-domain operations. We brought that in and we've, we've used both non-lethal and our lethal, whether it's the A-10s, the AH-64s, the uh, two uh, long-range precision fires, uh, down to the striker and mortars. We brought them all together with non-lethal and we've been able to provide more than one dilemma to our adversary. And that's different than what we did before at the individual company, battery, or troop level where they are training individually through these lanes. It's bringing all of them together. This, this scenario is as realistic as we can make it, and it is what we expect to do during time of conflict. And that is defeat the enemy and secure sites which we believe have nuclear, biological, or chemical weapons and prevent further proliferation. This is the first time a striker brigade has been on the peninsula. A U.S. striker brigade has been on the peninsula. They've replaced the armor brigade, which left here about six months ago. I think it's the realization that the striker is a platform, is more efficient and more tailored to what we expect to do here. The restricted terrain, the road network, uh, the striker being a wheeled vehicle, this performs better uh, and more efficient than uh, the Armor Brigade Combat Team. Armor Brigade Combat Team was great, uh, but the striker brigade is more tailored to what we expect to do here. 
So I can't talk about years back, but I can just say right now, uh, this is what we expect to do in time of conflict. So are we so focused on Seaburn? The answer is yes. We are focused on Seaburn for this exercise right here and for the last 14 days, defeating the enemy and securing sites from further proliferation. The drones here are part of the entire system or network that we incorporate into all weapon systems we have here. We talked about earlier from the AH-64s, the Apache, uh, the MLRS, the striker vehicle, the mortars, the individual at the ground. The UAS is just incorporating that entire network. Allow them to see. How? I, th I think it's, uh, you start off saying that nothing provides more motivation to be all you can be for the U.S. service member uh, than to sleep 10 miles from the adversary. And when we see these provocations, uh, we know that we need to have a focused training on it. Uh, Ukraine has reinforced that. Ukraine, all success in Ukraine, we see the alliances, we see the alliance here for the last 70 years, and it's reinforced our commitment for the next 70 years and why we need to have that alliance.